Hey everyone, welcome back to another devlog for Wizard Chess, a tactical deck building roguelike in development by 2PM Studios, aka me and my friend Ricky. Uh, as always, we're gonna be, I'm going to be taking you through some of the latest changes in the update that we're just shipping, so let's get straight into it. Uh, here we go. So, we are on devlog number 20, apparently. They do add up, and we're shipping zero, version 0 0.8 of the game now. That might not mean a lot to anybody except me, but that's getting pretty close to 1.0, so I'm kind of excited about that part. Um, this is, of course, the October edition of the devlog. We didn't do a devlog for the last patch that came out because it was mostly back-end balance changes. I'll be talking about some of that during this video. Uh, before I get into the main content, I'm going to do my shilling. If you own the game, or if you've been thinking about buying the game, or if you'd like to buy the game because you just found out about it now, please consider leaving a review on Steam if you like it. If you don't like it, please go to our Discord and tell me why. Uh, this number helps us a lot. Thank you to everyone who keeps reviewing. This number is creeping up. I appreciate you. So what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be focusing mostly on bosses and a new system that we've introduced called Quests with a decent amount of time dedicated to shops and some UI stuff as well. I put that at the back because there's a lot of minutia to discuss here and I'll show you the fancy stuff first. Um, we've been approaching development lately in a different way, which is a mission-driven, oh, I'm hovering the title bar weirdly, a mission-driven approach, which is basically the look at the game, look, we, we look at the game and see what players are saying, what it looks like based on videos we've seen of people playing and how we feel about it, and we work out what is the major thing that we need to do to improve the game right now. So for the previous patch, which I didn't do a devlog for, uh, it was to make the first run of the game as engaging as possible, to show off the variety of the game, to make it hook you quickly. And that's bled over into this mission, the next mission, which is making bosses good. <laughs> we sort of realized that once we made the first runs fun and had you uh, able to make to build your army with more control and have more divergent uh, like approaches, I suppose, then immediately it became clear that the bosses weren't really up to scratch for challenging you with those builds. And we've had to think about how the bosses are going to evolve up all the difficulty rankings of the game. So enough talk, let's look at a video of a boss. This is Cormag, who, if you have played the game, you will recognize this is not what Cormag's map normally looks like. Uh, it is a different map, and this is one of the first changes we've made to both Cormag and to His, is to add the, add variant, sorry, various maps for both of them. So, but now there's three maps for Cormag and three for His, and it cycles through them based on what rank you're playing at. We may add more, we never intended there to only be one map forever it, for the bosses. It was simply that we just hadn't gotten around to adding more yet because this game is really big and we do it in our spare time, so it takes ages to do these things. Uh, excuses, anyway. The other thing we've done in addition to adding new maps is add some new abilities. So I'll show you... Um, well, just, just a note on this. You can see, like, uh, this changes the way you play this game quite a lot, whether you have, you know, a big island in the middle with a straight shot to the boss, or whether you can go around the outside, what the corridors look like. Because it's like chess, each map, like this is the other map for Gormag that we've made, it changes the whole game completely because you can't use any of your previous knowledge that was sort of made in the other map on this one. And this was immediately when we did this, we were like, oh, we should have been doing this this whole time. Like it's so much better. But you know, we we will continue to feel that way about every change we make to the game up until the last second, I think. The other change that Cormac has undergone is... Oh, the video's got a little uh, front matter on it. So the, if I just get through this cutscene, I'll show you the... Um, so Cormac, on rank G, for example, here, will sometimes summon uh, these, which are called ghost swords. These are like pawns, basically, and you'll see in the video, as the enemy makes moves, these pawns can with a random chance, make moves for free. So they don't use the action up to make a move and they just march across the board from one side to the other. And over a few turns, I mean, they're not really like <laughs> massively affecting me at this point in this match, but if I skip forward a little bit, you'll see they keep making their way across. Uh, and if you ignore them, then you, you think there's not really any issue here, but if they get all the way to the other side, which I need to, there we go, we're about to get there. Um, if they get all the way to the other side, much like a pawn in chess, they will promote, not into a queen, because that would be too strong. They just promote into a stronger unit, basically. So you can see here, yeah, here we go. So the, the ghost swords turn into ghost warriors. 
So we've got Esme the Ghost Warrior there. This basically means that there's a reason uh, that the boss can keep getting harder or that more units can enter the game rather than it being strictly something where you just kill each unit in the room and then kill the shield orbs and kill the boss. Because this is... I'll move on to Hiss while I talk about this. Um, so this is the Hiss map you've probably played before if you played the desert. There's also a new map that looks like this with a little uh, bit of water here and the snake in the middle. And then there's one like this where you're in the middle and the snake is on the side. So I'm going to talk over this for a sec. Um, the thing I realized about the boss design in the game is that unlike a lot of other video game bosses, our boss fights were getting... The further into the fight you got, the easier the fight became because you were just simplifying the problem by removing pieces from the equation. And the boss basically got weaker and weaker as you kept doing that. And that means that once you start winning, you sort of have already won, but it hasn't happened yet, which isn't a great feeling, in my opinion. So one way of mitigating that is to have the bosses have things that build up uh, on you over time, or they can introduce new units to the map. So one thing Hiss does now is that they will poison units by biting them. So you see, uh, I can go back a second to make sure we get the moment. Um, yeah, they go poisoned, poisoned. And now if you hover over them, these guys have the poisoned effect on them. And this stacks up to as many skill as Hiss has. So it'll be five poison stacks maximum on this map. And this is pretty innocuous at first, but actually it already kills my Merc here because he only had six defense, five attack, plus one poison. And if this snake stands next to my Bard and starts poisoning them, like the game ends very quickly. So this is the right kind of mechanic, I think, to make the bosses more intense where you have to balance the fact that you need to move your bard away from the snake so it can't kill you with clearing out the map, as opposed to you sort of controlling the snake off in the corner and just picking off all the enemies. And there's ver versions of this, like Cormag's ability is kind of like this where it introduces enemies later. The snake already lays eggs as well, which hatch into more snakes. I think this is more... Rather than the boss being a series of enemies to kill, or, well, defeat, we use the word defeat in the game, uh it's more like a challenge that you need to survive and the challenge includes new enemies spawning or abilities that might be considered unfair from the normal gameplay perspective i think it's made a really big difference already and i'm excited to do more stuff like this especially at the higher ranks of the boss these can be really hard uh because we've got this incremental like scale up now and this is something i'm really excited about in the game generally is the path from the very beginning, the first time you play, through the first few runs, through the later game, it's starting to come together. Um, and I will talk about that more now. With quests. So what, what is a quest? Uh, <laughs> what is a quest? It is a set of criteria you have to complete, like deal double the damage required to defeat two enemy units, and then you get a perk if you do it, like gain one additional vim per combat. These could be lots of things, like defeat three um, three imps or something like that or get three fire units in your army there's lots of different variants and when you complete the criteria you get the perk as a reward so perks act as passive upgrades for the duration of a run you just get this as a perk and you'll see these perks stack up uh, in the top left corner of the screen so you can see my quests that i've currently got active here with the perks that they will give me plus my actual active perk at the bottom, deploy an, ex sorry, deploy an extra unit each combat. This is brand new, so like the system is not battle tested yet, but I really like how it makes me play when I experience the game. It gives you a sort of starting point to be creative from in terms of how to structure your run, where you have an idea of what you could do to make something strong based on just the options that are presented to you here, plus what's in shops and that you actually encounter. So speaking of shops, you will get quests in shops. We've replaced the shopkeeper with Cloaky from the tutorial. And Cloaky, uh, if I just go back here for a second, Cloaky offers quests. So you'll see here as well, the shop looks different to how you may have seen it before. It's now 3D. And you come in, you're greeted by Cloaky. They will offer you a quest and a perk as a pair here. You can take the first one for free, but if you have an active quest already, each subsequent one costs money. So you can see it's five Vim there. Uh, the shop now has this rotation thing where you can go and look at the different walls. This is a way of us fitting more stuff in the shop, but also it looks pretty cool, if you ask me. And you can see here that you can go back and forth between the different sides. Maybe there's something on these sides that you can use to complete a quest uh, just by buying stuff in the shop. Who knows? This turns the shop into a bit more of a hub where we think that you should probably be doing or, uh, at least like 
maybe for every one or two encounters there should be a shop at this point because you need to come here and build your army and that means you can pick up quests you can pick up units and you can pick up upgrades this sort of all this is where the action happens you test your army in combat and you build it in the shop so we should probably make the shop more uh, engrossing and a bit deeper was the thinking and I think putting quests here makes you always want to check the shop. It's got a, a real gravity to it. I think it's working very nicely. As long with all this, we've done a bunch of UI tidy up because one reason I had to make the shop work differently is for the Steam Deck. It just doesn't fit on the screen if you don't do something a little different to how we were running it before. And so I've gone through and done that for all the screens. Uh, I'll just talk a little bit about that here. So. I basically simplified everything. Like I made the UI bigger. It auto detects the resolution of the device it's running on now. And we'll try and scale the UI appropriately so that the text is legible, but all the buttons fit on the screen. So the tile screen looks like this. The combat has a toolbar at the top now, and these things are up in the corners. We basically cleared everything away a bit more from the main gameplay area. The map was already pretty clean. These are all up in the right corner. This is the only thing in the left, and these guys are still at the bottom. This is the options menu, which I screenshotted in between <laughs> this thing moving. But it's now a full screen menu. That's not important, but it does make it more usable on the Steam Deck. There's a lot of... This game works across a, a lot of different input methods because it's pure... Like you can do pure keyboard, you can do pure mouse, you can do pure controller, and you can do UI scaling, you can do gameplay speed scaling boards, and there's a lot of things that can break <laughs> in this options uh, constellation. So... I'm doing my best to make it work on everything. Please let me know if it doesn't work properly. And finally, the change log is now also a full screen view in the game, which makes it much easier to read. Um, I'm not going to go through this here. I don't think this is that interesting to read through. I've given you the cliff notes for the most interesting parts anyway. So that's basically where we're at so far. Um, I kind of breezed through this one. But that's because I didn't want to get as bogged down in the details. I can maybe digress a little bit more freely on this slide where I talk about what we're going to do next. So we've kind of been doing this thread of like synergy work on the game already, but we really can feel now that... I mean, I shouldn't speak for anyone other than myself, I guess. But I, I can really feel now that the game mechanics are working like the as in the systems are working as intended they are working with each other rather than against each other i think the system's design is settling into place which makes it feel like finally the time to just put in all the ideas we have for content like i sort of mentioned this with the boss at the start i suppose but we've known for a long time that we don't want to only have a few options in these different areas. And we have loads of ideas for the, the, for the, I guess the plurality of options for traits, for units, for quests, and new things to put in. But it's very rarely the most pressing design issue. And it's getting to the point where like it is the most pressing design issue, which is kind of exciting for me. Along with that, we've also got this other thread of the end of the game, basically, is the other thing we have to do next. So that means... For all of the uh, for, for desert and for the mountains, we need ranks A, B, and C for Cormac and for Hiss. And that means new abilities, probably new maps, probably more challenges, um, and maybe even some cutscenes and things like that. But probably no totally new systems, which is good. And for the Fae Queen boss, there's quite a bit to do there to make it really special, because that's, that's the final boss of the game. I mean, it needs to be special, in my opinion. So... These things are not going to be trivial by any means, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Like, and I can see a lot of fun stuff coming up where, where we've had to restrain ourselves from sinking heaps of time into generating just ideas for units, for example. It's finally time to do that stuff. We can just kind of sit down and put things in the game. And yes, that will make a huge challenge in terms of balance for us, but that's just the, that's a roguelike. <laughs> it's basically designing a roguelike is a huge balance problem. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm excited for people to check this one out. The game is starting to feel cohesive. And that has been something that's bothered me for most of its development is that we weren't quite there yet. I think we're almost there. So, uh, yeah, keen for... Well, I'm keen for all of the many, many incremental patches that surely stand between us and version 1 still. But I'm... I'm keen to just see the definitive experience coming into focus. I think that's how I'd put it. I can see what this game is now, and that is crazy to say after like five years of working on it. But there you go. 
That's how it is sometimes. So uh, that's it for this one. I tried to keep it slightly shorter. I think that's probably a good idea. I don't know that 30 minutes is a good length for these videos, to be honest. Uh, if you would like more of these, please subscribe for more. Maybe I'll do more frequent shorter ones. Maybe you can leave a comment telling me if this one was not deep enough in terms of the detail. Uh, if you liked what you saw of the game, please consider buying it. It's available on Steam. Uh, it's also available on Itch, I believe, still. If you go to uh, our website, you can find that out. You can join our Discord if you just want to chat to us or ask any questions. And please consider following us on Twitter or join the mailing list if you want to stay up to date with any of the development. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.